The Bear Point team of Phil and Malarden are in the UK and on our way to the beautiful county of Cornwall. We're driving 370 kilometres across England from just north of London and heading westwards past the cities of Exeter and the navy town of Plymouth in Devon and then over the bridge and into the county of Cornwall. Here I am on the motorway with my friend Phil on the way to the Polcaro in southwest of England. Just on the other side of Plymouth, we cross the River Tamar on the 1961 road bridge, which is next to the famous Royal Albert Railway Bridge built in 1859 by the famous engineer Isambard Brunel. Soon we're speeding through the rolling hills of Cornwall and are heading to the country roads that will eventually lead us into the tiny picturesque village of Polperro and our first stop of the trip. Polperro today is a popular tourist destination with its quaint harbour and ancient fishermen's cottages clinging to the hillside. Smuggling was big business since Polperro developed as a port and reached its peak in the late 18th century. Well, it's dusk in the village of Polperro in Cornwall. The uh, sun is beginning to set and it's a very quiet, peaceful place. The harbour, of course, in the daytime is much busier. Boats going to and fro, going out early to catch their fish and bring back in the afternoon. Very beautiful, quaint place and still a working village and an ancient one at that. It's good to explore the tiny back streets with pubs and cafes which all lead down to the harbour and the heart of the village. Right now with the English Channel out to the sea, it's low tide on this side of the harbour wall and the fishing boats will not return until high tide later in the day. It's a chance for Maladdon to do a little exploring on the beach and to see if he can find any of those old smuggled items like spirits and tobacco. I love it. But it's time to move on and drive along the narrow country roads a little further west and be ready to cross the River Fawi on the tiny but expensive car ferry. The town here has been in existence since well before the Norman invasion of 1066. The estuary of the River Fowey forms a natural harbour which enabled the town to become an important trading centre. So this is Fowey, some pronounce it Fowey, which is a really large inlet uh, just uh, around the coast from Polpora where we've been staying. Uh, it's a very beautiful place with some rather death-defying roads and of course we had to come across on the car ferry and the actual uh, little ferry cost five pounds each way which for about, I don't know, half a mile is ridiculous. But hey, we're here and it's a beautiful day. Cornwall has spectacular beaches all around its coast but here in Fowey there are just small modest places to enjoy the beauty of the river estuary to exercise the dogs and visitors from Serbia. But now we're heading inland to one of Cornwall's most popular tourist attractions as we negotiate tiny single track roads while hoping nothing is coming in the opposite direction. One of the top attractions in Cornwall is in fact this famous Eden project behind me. Uh, in the early days, of course, it was just two or three biomes or biodomes, if you like. Now it's grown into something even more grand with walks through jungle areas and rainforests. 
The complex is dominated by two huge enclosures consisting of adjoining domes that house thousands of plant species. Well, it seems amazing that we're here in the middle of Cornwall in England and actually we've been transferred to this amazing rainforest at the Eden Project. It's about 30 degrees Celsius here, which it certainly isn't outside. Oddly enough, despite this lush and tropical environment, there is hardly any wildlife under the biodome. No poisonous snakes or dangerous insects, just the odd exotic bird and dozens of busy ants. Rainforest in the world covers about 2% of the world's surface, but it contains 250 billion tonnes of carbon and regulates the world's climate. So you can see why everyone is so concerned about keeping it. And despite being under cover here, there's no chance of getting wet even during the heavy rainstorms, which are carefully controlled. Well, they always say it's raining in Cornwall, but this actually is inside the biodome at the Eden Project. But there's plenty of water, nevertheless, because we're in the rainforest. It's really easy to get lost inside this make-believe forest, and exploring the elevated walkways is a lot of fun. Quite an adventure, this. Let's see if I can do it as well as Maladen. So this is quite exciting, but a bit unsteady. The other biodome is very different. The Mediterranean biome covers 1.6 acres and measures 35 meters high. It houses familiar warm, temperate and arid plants such as olives and grapevines and various sculptures. The sculptures depict the myth of Dionysus, Greek god of the vines and his followers. We walk through a massive collection of beautiful wildflowers and Maladen got a ride on a hand-carved sheep which surprisingly managed to handle his 120 kilos. This lady seems to be in charge of watering all the plants here. It must be a full-time job, and if she does everything at the Eden Project, we think she'll need a bigger watering can. So, what do you think about the uh, the Eden project? Oh, it's nice, very nice. It's lovely. Lots of flowers, lots of plants, and yeah, it's very nice. Which bit did you like best? Oh, actually, the jungle one, the forest, rainforest one, very good. At almost nine meters tall and weighing 20 tons, Infinity Blue is an immersive installation that pays homage to cyanobacteria, one of the world's smallest living beings. But to survive, I reckon it'll have to give up smoking. So the Eden Project is an amazing place to visit, but we needed to move on. We were leaving Cornwall and heading back east to the city of Salisbury in the county of Wiltshire. Here, the magnificent cathedral has the tallest church spire in the land. And within its walls is an original copy of the Magna Carta, one of the world's most important documents. Although Magna Carta is over 800 years old, it is still today a powerful symbol of social justice and proclaiming the freedoms and rights of individuals under the rule of law, which has been adopted around the world. But another reason to come to Salisbury was to see one of the most important and oldest historic structures in the world. And it's just outside the city.
Hello and welcome to the one of most famous landmarks in the UK. Here we are at the Stonehenge, which was built 4,500 years ago. The Neolithic age in which Stonehenge was built is so long ago that there is no shortage of conflicting dates and views about its history. One of the most popular theories about it is that it's an ancient observatory used to mark midsummer. More recent evidence suggests that people did not just visit in the summer, but during the winter solstice when the sun sets between the largest of the central arches. Scientists know that many of the stones were dragged from as far away as Wales, but no one is certain how the horizontal stones were raised up to rest on the vertical stones. So much to see. Our next trip and video will feature a tour around London. Don't forget to subscribe to Bearpoint on the button below.